Hello buggers. Debbie and I have decided to do a little overnight on the beach trip. We're on our way down to uh, an area called Raggy Bay at Paradise Beach. The weather looks good so we're going to set up a little tent. We've got hot dogs, we're going to make a fire, we've got coffee, we've got our fishing tackle. We got our excitement. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We may have packed a little bit too much of that, it's getting heavy. But yeah, we'll uh, see you guys on the beach. Well, you decide you're going to go and camp on the beach and you choose a fishing spot that's a couple of kilometers down the beach. Got a trailer, but unfortunately, I'm the bloody horsepower. <laughs> Deb's in the background. Ocean is looking beautiful. Little bit of a southwester blowing. Water's probably a little bit too warm. But hell, it's freaking awesome. So you guys are gonna be setting up camp. Hell's bells. Anyway, we're probably about half a K from where I think we're gonna set up camp for the night. I just wanted to show you guys how far we've walked. So, we're from Jeffreys Bay. We've parked at a place called Paradise Beach, which is a suburb of Jeffreys Bay. And we're walking south towards St. Francis Bay on the Cromer River. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, I'll show you. But uh, those houses you see on the hill there on the other side, that is St. Francis Bay. So, yeah, it's been a bit of a stroll. But um, you guys see how, how good this surf's looking. We've got some White little rollers coming in here, some good white water. The area's got scattered reef, um, sandy patches in between. So, you basically you can catch anything here. You can fish for sharks, you can fish for black mussel cracker, cob, um, pig nose granta, uh, bartman, just about anything. Um, really versatile little area. Let's hope we can get a couple of those fish on camera for you guys. Ah, see ya. Woo. In case you guys can't see it, I've actually built a little stainless steel carabiner towage onto my waist belt bucket thing, rod bucket, and it clips onto the trolley so I can walk hands free, lean into the walk, especially since I've got about probably 60 70 kilos on the trolley this is our food our tents our sleeping bags inflatable mattresses coffee you name it water a couple of beers and wine yeah so it makes it a little bit easier but not easy just a, a little bit less difficult but i'll see you guys see you guys at camp
So there we have it guys, we're all set up. Debs is flipping keen. She's setting up. She'll be getting a bait in the water in the next five. This is home for the next 24 odd hours. Guys at our age, you gotta have freaking mattresses and pillows and blankets and cuck. I'm getting too old to be uncomfortable. But that's uh how awesome is that for a backyard? Yeah. Should I say front yard? We've got a sea facing property right on the beach. We've got St. Francis to our right, distance. We've got Jeffreys Bay, really far that way. That's where we walk from. And we've got that fantastic looking ocean. What a pleasure! Hey guys, so yeah, I've just done a bit of a recce mission for two reasons. Um, a lot of footprints on the beach. Um, and they don't look like fishermen's footprints and there's no dog prints with them so it could be some old farts who like to walk far for some reason or it could be the other thing the only other concern we have along this coastline which is um, the Palamon poachers target this area because there's nobody nobody can see them so uh, I found two shelling spots I'm not even going to go back and put it on video, but um, the beach is littered with fairly fresh perlamun shells, which tells me they've recently been here. They bring the perlamun out in the shell because it's easier to huck or to clean them on the beach than it is while they're in the water. And then they make their way up. You can see behind me here, uh, there's a blind river area that goes up through private farm which is actually a nature reserve um, and then they get picked up on the highway which is probably about a 5k walk from here but uh, yeah these buggers are getting like well over a thousand rand a kilogram for Perlamun at the moment so they protect that investment with violence uh, but I have come prepared I am some more I'm armed so I'm not too stressed it's just good to know also just had a look around, we've got a lot of driftwood on the beach so we'll be having a beautiful bonfire this evening when it starts to get colder. But yeah, let's hope they, uh, they're not working this area tonight, uh, otherwise things might get a little bit tense, but we'll, uh, we'll sort them out if need be. I'm going to go back now to Debs, you can see her where she uh, she's bringing there somewhere in the background there somewhere there's the tent and I'm gonna set up my rod put a line out and then I'm going to mission with my throw net gonna get wet doing that looking for some live mullets I'd rather do that while I've got some sunshine it's now 10 to 5 in the afternoon so I've got another let's say two hours of warm weather before it starts getting cold I should dry off in those two hours and hopefully I'll have a Love Lamet in the water. See you guys. Woo! Getting too old for this shit. But I thought I'd show you guys. I hope you can see inside the water there, but there are some boy keys. I had a really good throw with the net. Got about 20 odd mullets between 15 centimeters and about 35 centimeters. I'm gonna stick one in the blue there, just as it gets dark. See if I can find a mouthful of teeth. <laughs> Debbie with a hippo of a sandy, measuring in at 65 centimeters. And there she goes to release it. Guys, we definitely don't keep sand sharp. We were collecting some driftwood and Debbie's rod just went crazy in the rod holder. So, She's already got a sound shark, which I didn't even know she had on, so I didn't get the chance to film her. But this fish has got a bit of a shake to it, so it's probably a little pig nose grunter or a cob. It's giving a nice little pull. I'm getting eaten by little black bullet ants. But it's putting up a nice little bend and tassel. They'd be fighting it like a pro. Oh, it's a big shad. 
It's a really good size shed. Look at that. Look at that. Debbie almost going for a long line release there. Hold her up, love. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> shed it is. Shad. 41 centimeters, miracle. 41 centimeters, and just remember, guys, we've uh, we measuring to the fork. There goes Debs for the release. Hippo of a reggae. Letting it go. To be caught another day. First little guy. What's up cats? So it is now quarter past ten in the evening. Um, Debbie's caught a couple of smaller fish, uh, she's caught Shad, she's caught Sandy, she's caught Barbel. Um, I got a ragged tooth shark of 1.67 meters. Um, I'm not fishing for the smaller fish. Um, I feel pretty comfortable in my position when it comes to our little exclusive fishing club competition thing. So I'm going big, I'm looking for big fish. I've got some really big lummets, mullets, um, in the water on big hooks. Uh, like an absolute dumbass, I left the steel trace <laughs> at home when I packed the trolley. So that last raggedy shark I got was caught on nylon, uh, <laughs> which is like phew, unheard of. Raggies are normally, they nasty when it comes to biting you off. But um, yeah, we're down on the beach. We're, uh, it's absolutely pleasant. There isn't a breath of wind. Um, made a little driftwood fire on the beach. We're uh, indulging in my favorite little um, night fishing beverage and um, yeah, let's hope uh, that my big orcs can find the corner of a mouth with big teeth and um, I don't get bitten off. Uh, my own stupidity, I'm leaving the steel trace at home. But um, we're on the beach, and we're fishing, we're living the life. See you guys later. Yeah. That's fun. That's good. So Debbie's. Uh, tempting fate as much as I've been tempting fate tonight and she's got to circle through the nose of a good sized mullet head. She's putting some stinky fillets on the side and she's also going to hope she doesn't get bitten off. Looking for a bonus fish, some bigger points for the evening. That looks good. Let's see what that stinky thing gives us. Debbie has just got a really good bite. She says it's swimming with a bit of a shake and a pull. Is it coming? It is now half past ten at night. And I tell you something, it's a lot cooler here than what it is sitting next to that fire. Did it come off? Oh. It's just dropped the hook. That's how it goes. Sucks piles. Hey cat, there's nothing prepares you for 
the darkness of the beach at 11 o'clock at night. So on the way to camp, where we're fishing, Debbie said she saw a big old pole up in the dunes, a big old wooden pole, and I found it. Let's hope it's not buried. So this will be a nice long sustaining. Oh crap, it's freaking huge. So this pole's about oh, four meters, three and a half, four meters long, and about 200 mils in diameter. Once again, guys, like I said, Perlamun shell, Perlamun shell, Perlamun, Perlamun, Perlamun. If you look here, these are all very fresh Perlamun shells up in the dunes. A definite sign of the, the pearly perches. I really hope I don't have to deal with this evening. Um, yeah. Uh, have a look at this, guys. This is shocking. I'm going to adjust my light. This is all Perlamun shells, fresh, fresh Perlamun shells, probably less than a week old. If you have a look, they still got seaweed growth in the back. So the pearly poachers have been working this area really hard. Oh, this is a bit of a concern. This is probably in the last two days, not even the last week. So let's hope they see our fire. There's so many of them. See our fire and um, get a bit scared to come down. Although these guys are actually scared of nothing. But um, I'm from King Williamstown. Look at this, guys. This is shocking. There are just so many here. It is absolutely crazy. Yeah, some of these footprints here are very fresh. We had rain last night. And some of the prints are after the rain. So they were here early hours of this morning. But anyway, they'll have to deal with King Williamstown if they do come and give us nonsense. Um, in case I end up on the receiving end of a bullet or something, we're Debbie and I are camping at a place called the Blind River, um, Paradise Beach, smack bang between Paradise and uh, St. Francis. So uh, if we do get attacked, I'll throw my freaking phone in the bush. They found my phone, they can see this video. They'll know where we were. But anyway, no, I'm not worried about that. I'll kick the shit out of them. Anyway, guys, I'm going to drag this big-ass freaking pole all the way back, back to camp, and that should give us heat, light, and fire for a good five or six hours, I reckon. It's a big-ass pole. Um, see you later. What's up, cats? So we're pushing uh, towards midnight. There's that giant ass, looks like a friggin' Eskom pole that I've got lying in the fire. Just a little, a little hint to you guys that do make fires on the beach, etc. There's always a breeze, it'll be a land breeze late in the evening that comes down from the mountains. Behind us, a couple of k's away, we've got the Bovians. Um So that cold air runs down through the valleys, down over the beach, onto the sea. And that wind that blows through your fire will have your wood burn down in no time. So if you want a fire to last a long time, this little gadget you see here, which is a fold away, it folds into a little 300 by 100 uh, little plastic bag. And you set it up and it shields the bottom of the fire from the wind. And this gives you a much more sustainable fire when you're doing the crazy shit like we're doing right now. Debbie is slaying the barbell. Putting on another bobble bait. No, I don't want more <laughs> She's putting on another bobble bait. She's working really hard. She's been working hard for the best part of seven hours. For fucking bobble. For bobble. Um, there we go. That's what it looks like when you're on your way down to throw a bait for a bobble. But anyway, guys, a good little hint. These things cost about 50 bucks, 60 bucks at Outdoor Warehouse, one of those places. Really valuable. It'll make your fire last five hours versus an hour. But um, let's hope one of my big sticks go and I don't get bitten off and we can give you guys some footage of a big fish. Hey guys, so it's around about midnight. Saw something twitching around with one of my rods. Like I said, we forgot to steal trace. I'll be putting up big shark baits and I lost everything. 
So I'm going to give you guys a little rundown of the trace I'm using here and how I'm going to try and counteract these freaking stupid sharks. Anyway, so yes, uh, my main line from a coffee grinder is 30 pound. It goes on to uh, 80 pound braided leader of about 7 meters and then I go into about a meter and a half of 0 0.70 monofilament. I'm going to pop a little swivel on there, Shh, let it run down. That is for my running sinker. Then I'm going to take a slightly heavier duty Japan power. I don't know what number swivel it is, it doesn't really matter, it's good enough for the job. And I'm going to pop that on and I'm going to go with a three turn uni knot on that one. I'm going to make a loop, I go through the loop once, twice, three times, preset drop it down to the swivel wet it and set it we're gonna pop that tag end off okay there's my swivel from there I'm gonna take some more 0.70 line which is the thickest line I brought with because I'm a freaking idiot um, and I'm going to do another three turn uni. One, two, Zinta two. Boom. If you can hear Debbie in the background, the little joke we had in that last video when I said she's tying a bobble bait, she's busy measuring a bobble she just caught. <laughs> Shits and giggles, it's all good fun. She's getting points and she's catching up, which is awesome. So that 0.70, I'm going to give myself about, because the sea is very flat, I'm going to go about 85, 90 centimeters. Um, the reason being, when the sea is very flat, you want to give yourself a longer line from your swivel to your hook, or where you, you know, where your, your sinker anchors at the swivel point. Um, and on a rough sea, if you put a one meter hook line on, it's just going to end up a tangled mess. So you roughly 35, 45, 50 centimeters max on a sea like we've got tonight, which is absolute glass, flat, there actually isn't even a wave or a break. Um, I need a bait that, you know, if my elbow was the swivel and my fingers was was the bait, any bit of movement, you know, and my, and my trace is a meter long, I'm covering two meters of area on the ground. Um, in that slow moving current etc. So I'm covering more ground um, Yeah, so that's the reason for it um, On the end of this I'm going to put a 8 or a 9 uh, Eagle claw circle hook. I'm going to put a mullet head on there uh, On my running sinker. My sinker is going to be slightly shorter than my hook trace uh, It's going to be a, a wire sinker 5 ounce on this setup. I'm using which is the bluefish special the heavy which is a three to five ounce um, i'm fishing a very small reel on it it's the 6000 big boss uh, 30 pound braid which trust me guys i know big money is big money and whatever the case may be but these reels are absolutely reliable they're rock solid so i'm going to set this whole thing up i'll show you the whole trace when i'm done setting it all up and i've got the bait on it and whatever and i'll give you a little run through the the, the whole trace and everything again um i'm also i've got some steel dingle dangles that i made which i'm going to actually try and use as a bite trace i uh, hope that works uh so that i don't get bitten off again flipping hell but anyway hope that was helpful Okay guys, so I found the hook I want to use. It's actually a Trident 80 circle. Um, it's been used before, it's a bit tarnished, whatever, and you run your thumb across the point and it doesn't uh, absolutely bury itself in your finger. That hook should never be put on a trace, ever. Here's a little tip. So these round files, you can see I've just broken them by hand and cable tied them together. There's two round files. Um, the best ones to buy are the ones that come with the steel chainsaw sharpening kits. Um, if you cable tie them together and you run your hook through the groove in the middle, it creates a blade-like formation on the tip of your hook. I'm going to show you quickly. Because um, it's a circle, it's quite difficult. So I'm only using the last little bit of it, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to drag it through there. Just 
dragging it through that groove at about a 30 degree angle. Oh, there we go. So th that much work. Like two little round files, cable tied together. And I'm going to show you what happens when I try and, try and run my finger across this hook again. It's impossible. It just hooks. And the best way to actually tell if a hook sharp or not, if it hooks in your thumbnail, and you guys probably can't see it, but you'll see how it's dragged trenches through my thumbnail, that hook is now sharp. So that's a little hint on how to get your, your used hooks, or even some of the hooks you buy, even the, the better brands, some of them are just crap, and they're, like, they're not sharp. That hook needs to be an absolute menace. It touches anything, it goes in, that fish just looks at it from five meters away and boom, it's in the corner of the mouth. Don't fish with blunt hooks. Two little round files, cable tied together, drag the hook through the center of the crevice at about 30 degrees, 25, 30 degrees. And I promise you, it is luck. I can't drag it. It just wants to go through my finger. Little hint, use it, lose it. Debbie just is getting a really violent insane bite here right now i wish you guys could see the fishing rod but she is getting a really really good bite something is munching on what do you got as bait there babe uh, mullet. mullet she's got a limit a really good solid bite although it suddenly turned into a bobble bite <laughs> <laughs> it's points. It is points. Her excitement got me excited. Still there, just not committing. Hopefully we can be back with a uh, fast. Debbie has broken the bauble spell and she got herself a brown dog shark and it's a freaking good one too. She might be challenging my waffle record on this one. It's a hippo of a brown dog commonly known in South Africa as donuts so when they get really freaked out they roll themselves up in a little ball like a donut and actually bite their own tails yeah but uh woohoo another species my babe yeah there we go hook out let's measure him up debbie is a hippo dog measures in at a solid 62 and a half. 63 centimeters. 63. Nice. Bye bye. I'm bye. Ready to the sea. There goes the release. What's up, cats? There it is. The old uh, aluminium kettle straight on the freaking fire. Boiling some water to make a cuppa. There are very few things that remind you of home as much as this old school aluminium type kettle that I've got tucked in the fire right here. We grew up with these things. They are just, man, and the same as cooking on a fire. Making coffee on a fire adds a flavor you just can't match. Wow. So we got our coffee. I know it's white, don't judge me. So, no, no words can actually explain what happened between the last video telling you guys we were going to make a cup of coffee and what happened between that and the kettle boiling. So, put the kettle on the fire, looked up, Debbie thought she had a bite in her one rod, she ran down, grabbed her rod. My rod that was next to hers went absolutely freaking apeshit so I ran towards that rod I turned to look at what my other rods doing and it's not there anymore like literally not there anymore 
So I'll leave that rod, bolt over 30 meters over to where my rod should have been. It's not there. The rod holder's bent in half. The freaking, there's a, a plow line from the rod holder to the sea. I find my rod halfway to the ocean, pick it up, nothing on. Pop it back, stick a rod holder in the ground, run back to the rod next to Debbie, grab the rod, and oh my word. That flapper bait I told you guys I put out, got picked up by one of them giants like one of them giants so set the hook shout to debbie get the camera start filming she got a little bit of video in there we'll we'll add the video to this video but it just screamed off and i said to her very clearly i said i'm not gonna land this fish on this tackle it's just it's it's too big for this tackle and 10 seconds later Boom, get bitten off. Obviously the shark was massive and it ate above that dangle setup I showed you guys earlier on and bit my line off. So I reeled up with the sinker and a piece of line and bait and everything bitten off. But that was a big, I could feel, uh, we're talking a fish of you know, two, two, two 2.3 meters, two and a half meters, I don't know, a big, a big fish. But anyway, it gave me a freaking coon hiding and um, bit me off and I'd, I fuck, I flip and absolutely deserve it for leaving the steel trace at home. If I had the steel trace here, I would have landed that fish and um, if I had the steel trace here, I would have lost the rod and reel as well because I'm so complacent making videos about coffee and shit that I didn't even see my other rod get dragged to the ocean. So within a period of 40 seconds, both shark baits got absolutely mauled and uh, I, as a fisherman, humiliated. And I deserve it. I deserve to be kicked in the nuts repeatedly by Neptune, Mother Nature and all those others that find their homes in the ocean. And I'll take it. But right now I'm going to take this coffee. Thanks King Pa for the cup. <laughs> and um, I don't know, Debs might still put another five bobble on the board. What do you reckon, Deb? Is he going to put some more bobble on the board? I don't know. She's not, she doesn't want bobble. She wants something bigger than bobble. I'd like a smooth hound. A smooth hound <laughs> shark or a spotted gully. Something or that doesn't have freaking gully. teeth. But yeah, I just got my ass handed to me twice in the period of about a minute and a half. Like, if I had the steel trace here, I'm telling you guys now that I would have had two fish over a hundred kilos each lying on the beach two and a half meters it's the way life goes but after this coffee I'm not putting another bait in because um, I'm wasting my freaking time I'm gonna wait for sunrise and then I'm gonna hunt a couple of edibles in the shore break to the left of us here just north towards Jeffries there's a beautiful break running out in some white water so we'll leave the camp in the tent sunrise and I'm going to go 200, 300 meters left and I'm going to put some proper edible baits on that bank. I'm going to get a cob and a steeny or two um, just for shits and giggles. Um, but I'm fucking done for tonight. Uh, I mean I'm, I'm flipping done for tonight. Sorry. <laughs> okay buggers, it is that time of night. To be precise it is 19 minutes to 2 That's all fuck that if you dyslexic and whatever you got serious issues watching this video But there Deb's all wrapped up. This is our home Check we've even got a skylight or whatever, but anyway It's bedtime Taking the rods out of the water. We're getting hidings from giant fish. and We don't have steel trace and it's a absolute bugger up but um yeah we've got our rods on the trolley outside the tent we've pulled some of the lines from the rods wrapped around kettles and stuff right here at the doorway so if we do have any intruders or guys coming to try and steal our rods or whatever they gonna get a kettle of a fright but um we'll see you guys in the morning for a cup of coffee um We've got a mate of ours that's uh, going to join us early tomorrow morning. He's bringing some steel trace. 
Um, I lost two bonus fish tonight. Uh, so I plan on making up for it and getting that uh, bonus fish in the morning. See you guys. I won't say tomorrow. See you later. Good morning, savages. I don't know what it is, eh? I just never really feel like you freaking sleep. I feel like I've been run over by a freaking steam train, dude. And it's not like we had crappy accommodation or anything. You know what I'm saying? I mean, hell's bells, man. Comfort deluxe. Just, I don't know, I think maybe I spoke myself into a defensive parliament poaching corner um, and yeah it's, I didn't really sleep but yeah last night was chaos man the last two throws were just me getting my ass handed to me Debbie got like 10 bobble last night and a sandy and a shed she was motivated but you know she picked up over 50 points for this little comp that we fish and she's doing bloody well um, I hope you guys can see this. This is insane. So, I did look at where the high tide mark was last night, and I knew that the tide was going to get slightly higher by about 15 centimeters because um, we're getting closer to spring tides. And I chose a spot to pitch a tent. I didn't realize how flipping accurate I was going to be. So, I don't know if you guys can see, like along the beach here, there's like a high tide mark where the sea came up to um, and on the opposite side of us and our tent you can see it as well oh you can't no it's crap but where is it so you'll see it running yeah there's the high tide mark where the water came up during the night dude it's like the only patch on this beach where the water didn't reach right into the freaking sand dunes was where our tent is. We, it, it literally just, I don't know, Neptune, maybe because we released <laughs> all the fish yesterday. <coughs> Neptune looked after us and um, literally around our tent is the only spot that was dry that didn't get washed. So lucky. But guys, what is up with this? Look at it. It is freaking beautiful. It's insane. It's a beautiful morning. There's not a breath of wind. I've got the old uh, hot kettle on the fire there for coffee. Coffee in the morning. There's my caps are ready to get filled with hot water. Rod's, uh, Debbie's already fishing. She's keen as flint. I think she's addicted. But yeah, aha, kettle's boiling. I'm gonna make me a cup. Let's see if I can pick it up without burning. Oh, that's bloody hot. Okay, I want to make coffee. See you guys later. Africa man, gotta love Africa. Debbie's on her first part of the morning, Sunday morning. It's off for six in the morning. Oh, in the morning. I've got a little bit of uh, wine and old brown cherry backlash, but it's not hectic. Having my coffee. Oh. Man, the sea is glassy. I should have been out on the kayak. It doesn't look like a bauble. It looks like a little edible fish. What have we got? Oh, wow. Debbie got another really nice shed. We need to survive and keep us alive. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, so early morning, the shad are probably going to be pretty thick. So anything that looks like a fishy bait, sardine or a mullet bait, I think he's going to get absolutely shad taxed. Once again, guys, thanks for joining us. What a pearler of a morning. See ya later. Well guys, that's freaking Murphy for you. Left the bloody steel trace at home. Got my backside handed to me by some really big toothy critters. Um, and a mate of mine, old uh, Leon, there behind me, having a pee in the sea. He, uh, he missioned down here and uh, brought us some steel trace this morning. Went and got some fresh mullet. Some yellow tail, I've got a yellow tail head out at the moment. Um, and we haven't had a bite, not a single bite. Debbie's been catching some really big shad. Um, not even a barbel, it's just, yeah, it's one of those things. But still again, at the end of the day, what a wonderful world. Debbie is into a little mouthful of teeth. We put in a nice big mullet, a live mullet, and Debbie has gone tight. Literally the last throw of the beach camping adventure. But to guess the weight here, yeah, I'd say lip and hell that just popped the line. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, fellas, that's the end of our beach camping adventure. Debbie's heartbroken, she just lost a really big, really big shark. Uh, everything was right, tackle was right, everything was right. Bad, and sometimes it just doesn't go right. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, it won't be too long and we'll be making another. Cheers!